It was Martin Luther who said, when the battle rages, there the loyalty of the soldier is proved. It is not in times of peace, comfort and stability that our true colors are shown, but rather it's in times of persecution, turmoil, uncertainty and distress that our true characters are revealed. We can see this on an individual level as we look at the various seasons of our lives, but also when we look at people groups and movements, we can see this throughout history. One of the best groups to see this illustrated is the Waldensians. Today, in many countries of the world, we are blessed to enjoy religious freedom. In fact, in many countries, this is a right protected by law. However, this has not always been the case throughout history, and the time of medieval Europe was one such period. During that time, there was one dominant state church, the Church of Rome, and competition was not welcomed or encouraged. Religious groups who held onto different beliefs were often persecuted with the goal of bringing them under submission. Some believe the Waldensians are descendants of Peter Waldo, and whilst the names do match, and whilst he was a French businessman who sold his possessions and lived a life of servitude to God, he only lived in the 12th century and the Waldensians can trace their spiritual lineage back to the earliest centuries with men such as Vigilantes. Of those who resisted the enroachments of the papal power, the Waldensians stood the foremost, and the churches of the Piedmont Valleys were able to maintain their independence longer than most, but it was not easy. As the pressure grew on them to fall in line, they had a choice. Some left the valleys and went to live in foreign lands, which in turn helped to spread the gospel. And those who remained, they had to retreat further into the mountains, seeking refuge amidst the rocky fortress. The name Waldenses means people of the valleys, and originally it was Valenses with a V. It was translated into the French as Vaudois. But in the 12th century, the V became a W, one of the L's became a D, from where we get the name Waldenses today. The Waldensians did not choose to live in the Piedmont Valleys, but rather it was a necessity in order to be able to worship God according to the dictates of their conscience, in order to train their children in the ways of God's word rather than the traditions of men. They sacrificed the comforts they may have been used to and retreated up into the cleft of the mountains. The principles they lived by were more important than comfort. It's not easy to leave home and its comforts behind. The low number of missionaries around the world today in part testifies to this fact and sadly, it's almost default for us to seek to work for God in the most comfortable and financially rewarding place as possible. If we are ever called upon to make a choice, I pray that maintaining our current lifestyle is not a non-negotiable, but rather first and foremost, we would seek fidelity to God and sacrifice whatever we are called to. The identity of any movement can only be maintained through educating successive generations, both at home, at school, and at church. Without this foundation, our fabric disintegrates. The Waldensians put great emphasis on all generations, but especially on educating their children. And true education both teaches and inspires us to look outward. It is not with salary or benefits that we foster a true sense of service, but in any church, the best motivators are the twin levers of mission and message. The Waldensians knew what they believed, why they believed it, and they knew clearly that it was not a message they could keep to themselves. 
They set up schools that dotted the valleys where people could be educated. These schools were holistic in nature, but at their core and at their foundation, they had the Bible. The students used to copy the Bible by hand in order to preserve it. Sometimes the harder you work for something, the more you appreciate it. Today we have the Bible easily accessible in written and digital form. And I believe it would be well for us to consider and appreciate the sacrifices that have preserved God's Word through time for us today. The Wardensians had the Bible and they painstakingly preserved it. Today, if you visit the College of the Barbs, located just outside Torre Palizzi in northern Italy, you'll see the humble building that stands today. Nothing fancy, just a few rooms, but inside one of them you find the Bible copy table, showing how central the Bible was to them. It was this centrality of God's Word that gave them longevity, hard work, determination, a good salary, and even stubbornness all wear out as motivating factors for us today when put under constant pressure. Knowing why we believe, what we believe, why we do what we do is key. And over time, we see that the Waldensians knew this. The Waldensian motto is Lux Lucid Arn Tenebris, which translated means a light shining in darkness, and it aptly describes their experience. For hundreds of years, the people were kept in darkness through a religious system that focused on hierarchy, tradition, superstition, and conformity. Life would not have been easy for the Waldensian children growing up in the valleys, and they would quickly have had to learn the lessons of self-sacrifice, self-denial, frugality, and economy. The parents wished to bestow these principles on their children taught from God's Word. They had ultimately two things they wanted to teach their children, a life of purity based on God's Word, and secondly, they wanted to teach them the importance of being a missionary. Correct theology drives mission, and it was through a study of God's Word that they would have realized that they were not to live in the country or wilderness as hermits, as some do today, but rather they were to study God's Word and train and go forth as missionaries wherever God called them. The written account of these missionaries is few and far between, for the work they did was secret and undercover but they would study and train and venture out of the valleys and go to the major cities of Europe in France and Italy. They would prepare their clothes in such a way where they could put pages of the Bible in between the fabric so as to conceal it. And then at the right moment, they would take it out and share it with someone who they believed was showing signs of spiritual interest. The impact of their witness would spread slowly but surely on campus with the origin of it being undetected. The Waldensians knew that the primary purpose of their education was not academic excellence, but rather it was the conversion of hearts. This was something they had been taught since childhood. Mission service permeated every aspect of their lives. In addition to the students who went out as missionaries, they also sent out missionaries who, like the Apostle Paul, had a tent-making skill or trade that was their cover. They would secretly take portions of the Bible with them and travel often as merchants where they would be welcomed when they would have been spurned as an open missionary. They clearly knew why they traveled. It was not for pleasure. It was not to notch up another place they had visited or to see a landmark, but the primary purpose was mission. And the mission was costly. Many of them would lose their lives in some foreign land away from their family or friends, but they lived for a purpose that was bigger than life itself. When we live for a cause today that's bigger than our own lives, it gives us true purpose and meaning in life. Waldensian history is littered with heroes such as Claude of Turin, 
Berengarius, Peter de Broglie, Henry of Lausanne, and Arnold of Brescia, but it's the collective strength of the nameless majority that really gave them their strength. The existence of the Waldensians holding on to a faith passed down from the early church was an offence that aroused the most bitter hatred and persecution from the Church of Rome. Their refusal to surrender the scriptures was an offence that Rome could not tolerate. She determined to block them from the earth. Now began the most terrible crusades against God's people in their mountain homes. Again and again were their fertile lands laid waste. Probably their biggest setback was the massacre of Castelluzzo. In January of 1655, the Duke of Savoy gave the Waldensians a choice. Either attend Mass or leave. Rather than compromise, some 2,000 believers journeyed in the dead of winter across snowy rivers to be welcomed by their believers in the upper valleys. However, this was merely the calm before the storm. In April of that year, the Duke sent in the armies and on the 24th, a Saturday, at 4 a.m., the massacre began. Some of the most brutal means of death were deployed by the soldiers. And in order to escape, hundreds fled to the nearby towering Mount Castelluzzo for protection. The soldiers, however, found them and hurled them over the edge to their death on the rocks below, referenced in Milton's famous sonnet to the bloody Piedmontese that hurled mother with infant down the rocks. Survivors of the massacre were few, but they rallied together and wrote to Christians throughout Europe for help and support. Their letters included the heart-rending words, our tears are no longer of water, they are of blood. They do not merely obscure our sight, but choke our very hearts. The believers rallied to support them, and some, like Oliver Cromwell in England, called for a national day of prayer and sent monies to support them, letting them know that in their hour of need, they were not alone. A terrible period of persecution ensued over the next 34 years, from 1655 to 1689. During this time period, more than half were driven from the valleys and settled elsewhere in Europe. Yet in 1689, Henry Arnard led a force of 800 men from Noyon in Switzerland to the border. In winter, they resisted four separate attacks from a larger army. In springtime, a much larger army now of 22,000 men came to fight a much more smaller force of just 400 Waldensian soldiers. They were defeated. Not only that, but not one of the 400 Waldensian soldiers lost their lives. They returned to the valleys in what is called the Glorious Return, to reclaim them as a place to live and worship once again. Notwithstanding the crusades against them and the inhuman butchery to which they were subjected, they continued to send out their missionaries to scatter the precious truth. They were hunted to death, yet their blood watered the seed sown and it failed not of yielding fruit. Thus the Waldenses witnessed for God centuries before the birth of Luther. Scattered over many lands, they planted the seeds of the Reformation that began in the time of Wycliffe grew broad and deep in the days of Luther and is to be carried forward to the close of time by those who are also willing to suffer all things for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. The Waldensians had a faith that reminds me of Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Despite suffering numerous setbacks and persecutions, for several centuries, close to a thousand years, it did not seem to weaken their faith, but only strengthen it. Today, we're living in a world where things have changed. The new normal is different to what it was two or three years ago. And we've had to adapt our ways of working under the storms of life that we see today. May we have courage like the Waldensians. May we know who we are based on God's word. May we know who Jesus is based on a reading of scripture. May we have a purpose and a mission that's bigger than our own life 
and may that drive us forward. May God give us courage, may he give us purpose, and may you be encouraged to move forward throughout the storms and trials of life that come your way, knowing that Jesus is with you till the end.